welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, hope you're having a wonderful day, really appreciate you stopping by on today's video. We are talking about the Italian infantry fighting vehicle known as the Dardo infantry fighting vehicle. But before we talk about this infantry fighting vehicle, I'd like to talk about Yahaha, our video sponsor for today. Yahaha is a brand new UGC or user generated content creation platform for 3D multiplayer interactive experiences. With Yahaha, anyone can create and publish their own virtual experiences. You can build the creation without coding whatsoever, including myself, because I am useless at any kind of technical capabilities on a computer or any kind of server knowledge as well. Simply use components and smart assets that Yahaha Studios actually gives you to make your own dream games. I've actually played around with this uh, kind of software, creating simple little background games that me and some of the buddies have been messing around with when we have a few beers on a Friday night for the game nights. It's actually a lot of fun. Um, my games are very cringy, but it's still really addictive and fun to get into and just create some randomized game to just have fun with. But if you want to be more serious, you can also produce some really interesting games and some gameplay that you and your friends will enjoy. Yahaha provides you with millions of ready-to-use 3D assets. The assets are stored in the cloud drive and they can be real-time streamed to the local client when you need to use them. When your work is done, you can easily publish your creation to Yahaha cross-platform app, mobile and on PC, where other players can discover your work and join in to play. If you're interested in playing this simple yet fun and creative access to a world at your fingertips for game creation, then I strongly encourage you to check out Yahaha Studio. If you want to check this out and download it, then go to the description box below and click on the link. Have fun. Now the Dardo is kind of a peculiar style of vehicle because we're never really seeing much of it in the prominent sort of NATO line of vehicles that are out there today. But this vehicle truly does have some interesting capabilities that are quite unique to infantry fighting vehicles in the modern world, but still it's been around for quite some time. It's quite an old vehicle for its time in consideration of the lineup of other vehicles that surround in the world today. And being the fact it did start in the early 1990s, it really has come to somewhat of the end of its lifespan, even though it's being used quite well for today. Now the grand scheme of things, the Dardo is very simplistic really, but the features that it does have make it a little bit more different to the other vehicles and that are quite strange, particularly that of the firing ports that actually use the infantry inside to fire outside the vehicle, which is surprising because those were disbanded on most modern day infantry fighting vehicles such as the Bradley in its early stages from the United States, and the armament of this vehicle isn't really keeping up with the times either. However, like most Italian things, it is very, very fast. The vehicle carries six infantry soldiers fully equipped and can travel pretty fast in the configuration of up to 70 kilometers an hour with a governing top speed, meaning that this thing could go faster than 70, but unfortunately speeds beyond that have been known to cause some major issues in terms of vibration and damage to the running gear, especially when this thing is flying like a hot rod. But when you make things go too fast, it can shake or destroy itself, and when it comes to track lighting vehicles, it's not a good time. The power plant really is pushing this vehicle to the limits. It's an Ivoco V6 turbocharged after-cooled diesel capable engine of 512 horsepower. It is powered also with the Ivoco Viet's ZF type automatic transmission with four forward gears and two reverse gears. And this thing is a pretty nifty little vehicle really designed to get the battle bus setting of infantry in and out just like any other infantry flying vehicle in the world. However, the true focus of this vehicle truly is to get the infantry in fast onto the battlefield and then egress back out again unlike some of the more modern day infantry fighting vehicles that we see today that are there to support and continue supporting infantry as they push forward ideally though this is actually doctrine that is becoming quite old because infantry fighting vehicles today are almost as big as tanks and unfortunately not able to withstand some of the more modern day weapons out there such as anti-tank guided missiles and you know drones that can see these things from a mile away and pull in some really harsh artillery but the true battle bus has been given with this vehicle. It's a shoot and scoot capability with dropping off troops and pulling out again, well away from the infantry that is pushing forwards. The vehicle was the initial replacement to get rid of the M113, which was still at large with the Italian arsenal, and most IFEs at the time were randomly selected between defense procurement in Italy, but they never actually found a vehicle they wanted to pull up on, and the Bradley was really not in their market ratio for Italy. It didn't really come to the point where they wanted to pull the trigger on it, so eventually they just went for their own design, and hats off to them, honestly. Eventually, it was Ivaco that was in charge of producing both the hull and the power plant, while Otto Malera was responsible for the weapons and fire control systems. 
These were two prominent industrial specialists in terms of military hardware, and Iveco would normally be producing military equipment such as trucks, which was their speciality. When it came to infantry fight vehicles, it was pretty new to them, and prototypes were tested throughout the 90s to the production vehicle that was ready towards the end of 1998 and 1999. When it entered service, the Italian army actually really did enjoy the vehicle, and they were really, really enjoying its increased capability of carrying the six infantry soldiers compared to the smaller amount of four to five inside the M113. And it's a weird thing to say, but the spin-off of the Centuro tank destroyer was actually also produced as an infantry fighting vehicle, but in a wheeled configuration. And a lot of people do say that it was a lot better of actually doing what it needed to do, which was speed, but this thing could keep up with it. And the essence of an infantry fighting vehicle, they were trying to push the vehicle to do a lot better than the wheeled configuration instead of its tracked standalone configuration, but of course it couldn't. There's no way that a tracked vehicle is going to push faster than a wheeled vehicle regardless. The vehicle was in essence though extremely simple and basic to what it needed to do. With the 25mm auto cannon with enough rounds to provide a good amount of fire suppression, it could not engage however for prolonged periods of time due to the limited space inside of it. There was a standard aluminum alloy giving it quite similar weight to the M113, but it could have armor plate added onto it if necessary to upgrade it to different Stanag levels, and for the most part it was able to withstand 14.5mm rounds, flak or high explosive rounds from artillery. The vehicle was renowned for being quite small and tight inside, as you can see from the angled type turrets, the configuration for the crew inside was very very tight. And the centerpiece to this vehicle was the 25mm Urklon KBO automatic cannon, it was pretty capable for its time. Unfortunately, penetration value of the 25mm, that of similar today vehicles, is not quite performing where it should be, and vehicles from other countries around the world are pushing for larger, more heavy duty caseless and specific high explosive and armor penetrating rounds. However, the vehicle has been given the complement of two spike long range anti tank guided missiles, which are very capable if necessary. These anti tank weapon platforms are absolutely amazing and I do love the spike ATGMs they are probably the best out there in the world today and the six infantry in the back do have some space to punch a few of them in the back also the six infantry also though do have those side doors to shoot through were but completely pointless though and to this day never really have been used and been replaced to change the configuration of the hull the fire control system to this day is still quite formidable, made by Galileo Venonica, and is an integrated system capable of measuring target speed and range for accurate firing on the move when necessary, and this really didn't change much on other platforms either. The vehicle was previously called the VCC ATIV, and the Italian Army's first true infantry fighting vehicle, they really did push for quite a large order, and initially ordered about 200 of them throughout the 90s, and the Italian firms that actually made them produced them quite quickly. And to this day, being quite a useful vehicle for their military, they still are able to produce them at a mass rate if necessary. You have to look at this vehicle and really think about its capabilities for the Italian military. For an infantry fighting vehicle, its capabilities are substantial. It can do quite a bit with what it needs to do and can keep up with the C1 Ariette, which in itself has quite a big powerful engine to punch it through the battlefield. Now one of the benefits I have with talking about this vehicle today is I actually know someone who has served with this vehicle and they gave me a little bit of feedback to providing with what exactly they had as biggest concerns and they did mention of the vehicle's size. He wasn't really actually part of the commander or gunner or driver part of the crew but he was an infantry soldier in the back and he did say that it was very very tight especially when you're fully equipped and the drop ramp of the rear is actually quite oftenly failing. Uh, when it gets gunked up with too much mud and there was issues with the vehicle also overheating if they were driving too fast, especially going across some very difficult terrain, especially muddy terrain. Uh, and this is coming from an infantry soldier who really has no, uh, you know, a dedicated passion for the vehicle for the fact that he's not a driver, he's not a commander, he's not a gunner, he's worked in the back of it. Its true role is to deliver that infantry soldier. And, you know, he hasn't a huge fan of it, and no offense to the person that I did speak to, he's a good friend of mine, but it's really hard to dictate the true capabilities of the vehicle from an engineering perspective anyway, or technological perspective, when you are being driven in the back. But you can see the actual basis of the vehicle for its necessity to deliver troops in the field where there are some concerns, and when you have a rear ramp that is failing, quite often 
That's a problem, especially if you can't get the troops out the back of your vehicle when deploying as an infantry fighting vehicle. That's probably one of the biggest issues you're going to have. And the individual did say, though, they're very proud to serve alongside it and really did enjoy serving with it. Uh, and it's a very capable vehicle, but, you know, for the most part, uh, it really wasn't their cup of tea. And, you know, this is just one person, but they did really enjoy flying around it sometimes. Uh, it was extremely fast, and if their drivers weren't uh, proficient enough, they did bounce all over the place, especially with that cramped low ceiling height. Uh, so your helmet definitely is uh, going to be needed in that situation. But it's a testament to, you know, the enjoyment of other soldiers, I'm sure, that have worked with this vehicle. It's fast, it's nimble, it's able to keep up the battle group. Uh, and performed for the most part what exactly it's been designed to do you know get troops there quickly drop them off a little bit of firepower to get it out again and move on um, in terms of this capability of vehicle to others out there today uh, it's really hard to say I mean there is a lot of different vehicles out there now that are modernizing in the infantry fighting vehicle world I really don't think this is keeping up with today's capability but at the end of the day it still does what it needs to do. Uh, it's no Bradley, it's no Puma, it's no Lynx. Uh, it's certainly no CV-90. But considering it's been developed from the 90s, I would say this is really so much so to say a cheaper version or a more basic version of the CV-90 and its variants. And at the end of the day, it does what Italy needs it to do and get the Italian infantry to the battlefront and doing it well for quite some time. And yeah, that's really, that's all I can say about it. A very basic, fairly primitive IFE. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please leave me a like and feel free to click the little bell by the subscribe button. If you also did enjoy today's content, I would really appreciate and encourage you to check out the description box below for my Patreon and PayPal. And thank you to everyone who has been supporting me on there. I cannot thank you enough. It really does mean a lot to me. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, those of you who have been financially supporting my channel, thank you for donating to Patreon and PayPal or whatever other means you've been doing with subscription. It means so much to me, so thanks again. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.